Hi everybody, thank you for joining me today. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you a demonstration and some educational tips to guide you along the way whilst you're crafting with the fabulous Tattered Lace Volume 2 card shapes. Now this is an incredible comprehensive die set that really does include and encompass everything Tattered Lace, but of course, really innovative designs when it comes to card shapes. So what we've got here is we have got our A4 bench card and also our chair. Now these create fabulous stunning projects that again, pop up, fold down and give you versatility to actually send three dimensional projects flush in the post, but pop up on arrival. I mean, look at these, these are fabulous. Again, if you're using your armchair, making these really stylized and personalized, whether they're gonna be cutesy, whether they're gonna be whimsical, playful, you can then fold these up, send them in the post, and you've got fabulous projects to craft with. So with all of that in mind, I'm gonna share with you exactly how you use these die sets and what you can do with them, why they are the way they are, and what they can do whilst you're crafting. So straight away, we're gonna take the main element, this one here, which is your A4 die set, the largest one within the kit. Now what this has is a perimeter cut line with score lines in between intermittently here to give you that card shape. So no guesswork, no measuring is involved with something like this. I'm gonna take here one of our pattern papers. This is from the USB volume two. And of course that works harmoniously with this collection designed to work together. So you can use your very own papers if you wish to do so. But with this one, I'm just gonna line it up with the paper itself, put a little bit of low tack tape on either corner. I always find either corner is best, especially with a larger die, it stops it shifting, because typically a smaller shape you may put in at an angle to glide through, whereas this, we need it flat and flush. So we're gonna pop that directly onto our cutting mat. I've got here to my hand, actually, a little bit of cut tidy. So whilst I've got it, I'm gonna use it. Um, it's not essential, but I find it does give you a crisp, clean cut. And depending on what machine you're using, I'm using the Pro Cut for this, which I would definitely recommend because it's great for those larger dies if you just want to get your sandwich correct with that. So we're gonna pop it straight through, feed it through our machine. Now what's happening there, of course, is it's cutting the outer edge of that card shape, giving us that fabulous A4 concept. But at the same time, it's creating those score lines which are going to build up that fabulous card shape. So all of this is being done for you, literally as we speak. So with the die itself, it's gonna take this out of here. It will leave you with this frame, okay? Now this is technically the only bit of waste you're gonna find yourself with when you're using this die, but I wouldn't even see it as waste. I mean, this is gonna be a skirting board, you're then gonna run around the edge. You can use it for so many different things, okay? So we're gonna pop that to one side and keep that. Then the die itself, this here is your card shape. So I'm just gonna remove this little bit of tape that I've got that held it just in position from the front of the print. And I print, I actually die cut it with the print facing up because we want to score into the print itself. Now with that in mind, oh, I've got a little bit of tape here. I'm just gonna take that off before I start building my project. Here we go. Fabulous. And take that little bit off just here as well. So with all of that now ready to go, if you flip it around, you can see very faintly, just the score lines, we're gonna fold it in on itself, okay? And see how effortlessly the score lines just allow you to work with it. Then fold it outwards on either side. So you've created, if I hold this upright, you can see from the top, it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle. You've got a U shape, which we then expanded out, okay? Which gives us the card. Now with that in mind, we then have all of those elements that come into play inside here. So the die itself, which is the armchair, you've got mats, you've got layers, and many different configurations and ways that you can use this. So I've actually cut out the armchair already here. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to fold. And one of those things that just instantly comes to life. So we want to, of course, fold the arms. So the edges of the armchair, we're gonna fold those. The seat, of course, is gonna to sit to the back. So we're gonna fold that going backwards. And then we're gonna fold the bottom and base and the top of the chair going forward. So then as we do this, the whole card shape literally just comes to life. So you can see there as it's all all working, coming to life, all of that then, oh, I love it. There we go. And then just put all of those score lines down and then you've got your armchair, just like this. So you've got your two peak folds at the top, you've got your valleys at either side and in the base of the chair. So straight away, you've got your card shape. Now this means that when you're working with this, this space here has been designed to fit this in perfectly. So we can put this in place straight away, and then as it folds up, the whole card actually folds in on itself, meaning you can still send this in a standard size envelope straight away in the post. So with that in mind, I'm gonna take some adhesive because I'm gonna place this in position first. So we're gonna take 
a little bit of wet glue just around the edge and you want to add adhesive just to these components. You don't want any glue on the chair itself. Now there is a mat um, included within that die here which you can use then to change this background if you wanted it to match the wallpaper but that's up to you. You can use your creative ideas to tailor this in really whichever way you want. I'm going to leave about two or three mils um, at the top here. So we've got a border just around that top edge and you can see then there's just a slight border at the bottom edge. That means that when this all folds, of course, it will then all just fold nice and flush inside. So they've not got any edges sticking out. So that when the recipient of your project opens it, they're then presented with all of this creativity. It's fabulous. So upon this, we're going to add additional elements from our collection. Now, in that die set itself, you've got loads to play with. The window is one we're going to go to first. So when you're cutting the window, it has your mat with a tab and the frame itself with cut and pip lines. Now, if you run this through together on your plate, just like that, it will give you exactly this, which means you can have the window on a tab opening, whether it's both of them, whether you're going to have a you know set of bifolding windows, you know, entirely up to you, whichever way you want to make your home, you have the options to do so, really, really playful. So I've printed a scene here. You can use any scenes. It could be some mirror card behind here, anything you want to. Whether you're going to dip into your two red robin scenes, your tattered lace ones, all sorts, you can use with this. So we're going to put our image straight down. And then I'm going to add a bead of glue just to the edge of this tab. And then I've got another window here I'm going to add a bead of glue to. I'm just going to put a slight bend there just so it gives us a bit of lift with that window. And then if we position these two together at the same time so I get the right width on either side, I'm just going to match them up then place them down over the top of this, okay? Just like that, perfect. So when we put these in place, we can glue them down. And then what we're going to do, here we go. And then just going to add a little bit of pressure to adhere those down. We've got so many elements. So we've got curtains. So with this, you can have a blind or you can have curtains. So you dress your room in any way you want to. Again, there is charisma. I've used that for this one. It's a slight gradient, so it's an off-white. So just shading those areas. You can have this going around either side of it. So let's put these to the top of our project. I'm going to put a little bit of glue at the side and at the edge. So let's put that one just here like that. And then let's put a little bit of adhesive again now on this one. And we'll put a little bit actually at the bottom just to secure it into place because we do have moving parts on this card. There we go. And what I'm going to do, which I haven't done on this side, is put a bit of glue just underneath that bottom of the curtain. So you can then use dies such as, let's have a look here. You've got loads of different dies, whether you're gonna then make this and create a curtain pole to go across the top, you could do that. Maybe these are on a runner. You know, you can really tailor it to however you're wanting to do it. So super, super creative die set. Um, what we're then gonna do is build in even more elements. So notice how when the chair is folded flush, you've got this rounded area, okay? Now on the die set, you get a rug. Okay, so you can put the rug on the footing of where the chair is. So this element here sits in the bottom is a rug for the chair. Really, really cool. So we're going to put this round here. And really, this is the moment where we've understood the process of how we build the project, what the dies are for, how they work and what they do. This is the playful bit. Okay, so when we talk about model making kits, whether it's, you know, those kits you used to use growing up or whether it's ones the grandchildren use, this is a model making kit, but a craft kit. It's something that's designed. It's something that's given you all of those different elements. But at the same time, you can actually tailor it. So it's a, it's a model making kit with no guidelines per se, because that means you have freedom to create your outcome in any way, shape or form once you've got the structure of that card shaped down. Really is up to you. So with this, what we're going to then do, I love these bits. Okay, so the frames. Look at these little frames that come on here. So with these, with your frames, whether they're the ovals or the squares or circle, just cut them in mirror card and I use the same scene that I used in the window. So it actually all ties together. So we could have maybe this one this side. I've then cut this one twice, one in gold, one in silver. So that gives us a frame. So I'm just positioning some of these pieces down for now, thinking whereabouts I'm going to place them. The tropical plant, of course, which comes with your chair die. We could have this to the side. We've got this really, really cool die that sits with inside this die set and it is just here. It almost looks like a towel rail um, or a shelving unit and I'm going to use it as a shelving unit for this, okay? Um, and not to mention there is also a die set designed to go with this, which is your table one. Now, of course, this is separate from the collection, 
but works with it. So it's got table runners, a table itself, and all the elements you want to dress it with. So always bear that in mind. Um, and from the chair, we've also got the lamp. Now I'm thinking, do I want the lamp this side? It feels right for it to sit this side, I think. In fact, I don't know. I'm gonna put it here. And this is, this is the thing, I'm playing with it. I'm really using it to be, you know, to imagination. We've got the chandelier. I might sit that down at the front. So I'm actually gonna add a little bit of tape just to that. But what you could do is have a piece of acetate coming forward and having it suspended. So you've got loads of different elements within here. In fact, what I'm gonna do, because we're gonna add our chandelier there, I'm gonna glue these windows down. So let's put that one down first, to have it nice and flush. And when you're building these up as well, always remember the amount of layers that you're adding. So keep note of what layers you're adding and where, because you still want your card to lay flat when you fold it up, okay? So if you'd built loads of decoupage into it, always do a little test, fold it every now and again and think, right, okay, it's not folding there. Why is that? You may have put a few layers on the score line. So we'll put our chandelier here. There we go. So that sits within the center, of course. I'm just putting a bit of pressure on. And then again, just testing to make sure, which it does, it all still folds nicely. Okay, so it's coming together beautifully. Let's add our gold mirror. Just gonna put this to the side. So let's put that one just here. There we go. That now is on our project. We're gonna use the inside of that oval. You could decoupage this up a little bit, but, or you could use Cadence Mirror Spray on some acetate. That would look really cool because then you've created an actual mirror. And then the lamp itself with the floor plant, I'm gonna have the floor plant to the edge and maybe bring that lamp in just to this side. There we go, yeah, like that. So then let's put some adhesive just on the back of this plant here it so it's overhanging the edge. Again, we can work from the edge of the cards. We just don't want to really go up and down with this because we still want it to sit with inside. And then let's add some glue just to the lamp itself, some on the base. There we are. You'll notice as well, I'm using my bottle holder stand. Fabulous for literally every project, especially like this when you've got loads of bits that you want to add in, but you're not quite sure where it's going. You don't want to be shaking your bottle every two seconds, trying to get that adhesive down. So I'm gonna put my frame just here. There we go. And then that little shelving unit we spoke about earlier, I think I'm gonna put that one just there. Let's put some little bits of glue just on those edges. Here we go. And you can see how the whole scene, the whole story is starting to actually come all in its own. We've got cushions as well, so we can actually build these up with foam if we want to. I'm gonna put a little bit of wet glue though just on the inside of this one. Let's have it just there. And you could even have the little kitty cat all snuggled up, as snug as a bug in a rug on top of that armchair. So we're gonna put that one directly on top of here. So you've got all those added elements. Maybe we're gonna have like this cat being a bit mischievous climbing on the shelf, or we're gonna have the plant and the lamp. In fact, actually let's have the plant and this little table lamp on that side. <clears throat> there we go. Just here like that. And then let's use the smaller one just there. There we go. And then with our cat, He's thinking, why am I not on the chair? How did you manage to get the chair and I didn't? So I'm gonna put this one. There we go. Just down there like that. And that is how easy and simple it is. So that is how easy and simple it is to put this together. And again, we just utilized really the remaining elements from this die set to create any story, any chapter you want to, because all of those are on there to play with at your own leisure. So how does this fold up? Okay, so, the card itself, I'm just gonna take it from the bottom like this, and then all of those elements that fold in together. And then soon as your recipient receives this fabulous card, you've then got that fabulous concept. If I stand it right, you can see from above how it stands. You've got all of this here together. It is a true showstopper card with so much creativity, so much you know ingenious ideas. And this is using, I wouldn't even say 5% of what comes with that die set, just to share with you how creative this can be. I mean, how far are you gonna take it? Are you gonna go with multiple layers? Are you gonna go with all of the detail? Again, we've got loads of lace we can build into this one. I mean, look at this with the bird cage on there, all of these different elements to play with. There is tons to work with on this. It is truly, truly fabulous. So all of this in mind, 
comes from that incredible die set of Tattered Lace Volume 2 card shapes, which again follows on beautifully from Volume 1, so you can use the both of them together. Now, definitely do check out the other videos for your scan and cut, um, all the SVG files that go with this collection, and of course, Minecraft Studio, so they're all not to be missed. Incredible ideas, great inspiration, but I hope you found this video really interesting and enjoyable because there's so much to be explored with this collection, so stay tuned, and I'll see you for the next one. Take care. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notification of all our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.